afternoon and thanks for joining us. This is Sage. You're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade, and there's no better way to wind down the day than with today's market close commentary. So let's dive straight in. The Australian shares ended lower on Friday, weighed down by losses in blue chip stocks, such as Afterpay, Fortescue Metals, CSL, Origin Energy and Red Bubble. The market also tracked the fragile COVID-19 situation in Sydney, which reported a spike in the case tally, despite an extended lockdown. The S&P ASX 200 fell 33% to close at 7,392.60 and the index opened marginally higher earlier today, following firm cues from Wall Street, but soon paired its gains. The equity benchmark settled the week marginally lower, albeit closing the month on a positive note. And this is the 10th straight monthly gain for the index among the individual stocks. Debt and equities manager Janice Henderson emerged as the top gainer, ending 7.9% higher. And on the losing side, minor Orocoba topped the chart with a 10.4% loss. And next up, let's see how the sectoral indices perform today. The equity market witnessed broad-based selling as eight of the 11 sectoral indices ended bleeding in the red. IT was the worst performer with a 2.4% loss, followed by utilities, which declined 1.8%. Among others, healthcare, telecom, consumer discretionary, energy and consumer staples also settled in negative territory. Bucking the trend, however, AREIT was the top performer, closing 1.35% higher. The financial sector also ended higher with marginal gains led by National Australia Bank, which announced a share buyback program. And in the banking sector, all the Australian big four lenders, Westpac, Commonwealth, ANZ and National Australia Bank Limited ended higher. Moving on now to the IT sector, most of the stocks ended in the red and the buy now pay later giant Afterpay was the top loser followed by Cezil, EML payments as well. In the IT space, Neomap Limited, Megaport Limited, Altium were among the worst performers. In the minor space, Index Heavyweights, BHP Group and Rio Tinto ended higher after hitting their record highs during the day's trade. And meanwhile, Fortescue Metals Group ended lower, reversing its previous session gains. In this segment, we'll shift our focus towards the stocks that created a buzz today. Beginning with the National Australia Bank, who rose 1.3% after the lender unveiled buyback plans. And National Australia Bank, one of Australia's biggest leading banks, will begin a buyback of equity shares worth up to 2.5 billion Australian dollars by mid to late August 2021. The lender said it will buy shares on market alongside its dividend reinvestment plan. And the decision has been taken to progress its common equity tier one, the bank's core equity capital, towards its target range of 10.75 to 11.25 per cent. It seems to be the season of buybacks among the Australian banks, with today's announcement coming just 10 days after the previous buyback. At the beginning of this month, it was pegged that Australia's big four banks are likely to return a record. 10 billion Australian dollars or more of cash to investors over the next two years. And now before we look at the shares that are in the news today, it's time for a short break. Hi, this is Andy Liu broadcasting from Calkine Media Studio in Australia and I'll be hosting the new Calkine Wellness Show. The half hour show will cover topics from how wellness as a concept has become even more significant during COVID to how becoming vegan may improve your health and much more. We are excited to showcase our live streaming show to our audience of millions overseas and in Australia. Tune in to Calkine TV and join me. Welcome back, viewers. This is Sage. Hope you're enjoying your Friday afternoon so far. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. And let us now take a look at some of the updates. ANZ Banking Group was the first homegrown bank to announce the share buybacks of up to 1.5 billion Australian dollars to its shareholders. And the proposed buyback is likely to begin on the 3rd of August. 
2021 and will go all the way through till July 2022. Among others, Absolute Equity Performance Fund announced on-market share buyback of up to 10% of its issued share capital. And this amounts to approximately 9.2 million ordinary shares within the next 12 months. And moving on to the next big news, Australia's leading energy and broadband provider Origin Energy saw its shares decline as much as 9.19%. The stock emerged as a top laggard on the ASX and the company is in an exchange filing, disclosed that its earnings are set to take a hit due to the write down of its core assets. It expects to recognise non-cash post-tax charges of 2.25 billion Australian dollars this year due to dour outlook for the energy prices and a deferred tax liability. This includes deferred tax liability of 1.58 billion Australian dollars in its energy business and a tax expense of 669 million Australian dollars. Also making the news, AMP Limited dropped as much as 2.63% on report of legal action against its six companies. The Australian Securities and Investments Commission has initiated court proceedings against six companies of the AMP. The agency alleged that AMP via its group companies charged fees for no service on corporate superannuation accounts. The corporate watchdog claims that these six AMP companies have charged advice fees to more than 1,500 customers despite being notified that those customers were no longer able to access the relevant advice. And ASIC claims that AMP secured more than 600,000 Australian dollars in advice fees from involved customers. Debt and Equities Manager Janice Henderson saw its shares surge over 9% and topped the ASX gainers list. And the stock witnessed a surge in buying after the asset management firm declared dividends following strong earnings in the June quarter. The assets under management rose 6%. During the second quarter, ending June 30th, 2021, compared to the same period last year, and the operating income increased significantly compared to last year, the board of the company also declared a quarterly dividend of 38 cents US per share and approved the share buybacks worth 200 million US dollars by April 2022. And shares of buy now, pay later business says all plunged as much as 9.9% after releasing its cash flow report for the June quarter. And the stock price declined despite a rise in its underlying merchant sales and customer base. The instalment payment platform has reported 118% growth in merchant sales in the second quarter of 2021 compared to the same period last year. And the income as percentage of merchant fees held steady at 5.9%. And total customers increased by 95.5% while the firm's active merchant count rose to 40,200. Next up, shares of Beston Global Food Company Limited gained as much as 9.1%. The company shared it has secured a contract to supply mozzarella and other cheese requirements to a leading food firm based in Australia. The deal representing a sale of around 3,600 metric tonnes of products for the next 18 months is valued in excess of 20 million Australian dollars per annum. And now before we take a look at the shares that are in the news today, it's time for another short break. Thanks for your time joining us, viewers. Sage here. You're watching Calcine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade, and let us take a look at more of those updates. Now, in our next segment, a look east towards the Asian market performance. The Asian markets were trading lower on Friday, undermining the firm cues from Wall Street, which rallied despite lower than expected growth in the second quarter gross domestic product. And Hong Kong's Hang Seng remained the worst performer in the region falling over 2% on sustained selling in tech stocks. China-based tech stocks such as Alibaba, Tencent and Meituan tumbled following Chinese authorities' crackdowns on the tech, property and education sectors. And in a similar fashion, China's Shanghai Composite was down 0.5%, while Japan dropped 1.5%. 
South Korea's Kospi also fell over 1%. And bucking the trend, India's BSE Sensex was up 20%, while Jakarta's stock exchange composite index rose 0.3%. And moving on now from Asia over to the US. And in the overnight trade on Thursday, American stocks ended higher on robust company earnings and encouraging economic data. The Dow Jones ended 0.45%. And the S&P rose 0.4%. And the Nasdaq settled 0.1% higher. In the last segment of this show, let's have a quick look at the crypto market's performance. The cryptocurrency market was broadly trading in the green during the Asian trading hours on Friday, heading to the end of the week on a positive note. And the digital assets have witnessed continued recovery this week with major digital currencies like Bitcoin, Ether and Dogecoin witnessing a surge in buying. Driven by a strong rally this week, the market cap on the global crypto surges to 1.59 trillion US dollars and currently Bitcoin was trading 0.7 percent lower at around 39,729 US dollars the world's largest cryptocurrency has risen almost 23 percent this week advancing for eight straight days and this is the longest winning streak by the virtual currency since December 2020. And meanwhile, Ethereum, the world's second largest crypto, was up 5%, reaching 2,413 US dollars. It has gained 18% over the past seven days. And meanwhile, other digital currencies such as Dogecoin and XRP, Cardano and even Litecoin were also flashing in the green. So keep your crypto wallets in reach because... It looks like these currencies are shooting for the moon once again. And well, that's all for now in the last trade with our existing operations in Australia, New Zealand, UK and Canada. Kalkine Media has launched its operations in the US markets too. And every day in our first show, the Global Market Roundup, you can get the latest and important news of the US, Europe and the Asia Pacific markets. So on that note, I shall see you tomorrow on Monday, should I say, as close as possible to 10 a.m. live from Sydney.